1.1. Costa Concordia cruise ship. All started on the evening of January 13, 2012. The Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia, carrying 4,252 people on its first leg of a Mediterranean cruise, struck an underwater rock while sailing too close to Isola del Giglio Island, off the coast of Italy. The ship started capsizing and an evacuation effort began with the assistance of locals as well as the Italian Air Force. While most people made it to shore safely, 32 passengers and crew died during the disaster. In the following months, one of the largest and most expensive, its total cost reached $1.2 billion, salvage operations ever commenced, aiming to refloat and remove the half-sunk cruise ship. Using huge sponsons attached to its sides as well as an underwater steel platform, Costa Concordia took an upright position on September 2013 and was finally refloated in July 2014. The ship was finally towed to the port of Genoa where it was moored against a wharf that had been specially prepared to receive the vessel for dismantling. This operation is expected to last several years. Since 2014 only a handful of photos from the interior of Costa Concordia have been published, mainly by the Italian Carabinieri. Last year, German photographer Jonathan Danko Kielkowski swam 200 meters to the ship and jumped on board for a photo shoot. In his photos we see that much of the ship's furniture and equipment remain on board. Among them, luggage, wheelchairs, prams and other personal belongings of passengers who abandoned the ship on that January night four years ago. Two dot icebound Russian ships wrecked off Kamchatka. Kamchatka is a Russian peninsula in the far north, home to seals, volcanoes, and a large industrial airship graveyard, where rusting hulks of tankers, trawlers, and tugs lie embedded in icy permafrost, slowly sinking into harbors they once stood tall and upright within. Titanic 2. An exact replica of the original ship. An Aussie billionaire is building a fully function replica of the Titanic that will set sail in 2018. Australian billionaire Clive Palmer's fully functioning replica of the Titanic will be launched in 2018, two years later than initially planned. A spokesman for the tycoon said that the project had merely been delayed and not abandoned. Titanic 2 will look virtually identical to the Belfast-built luxury liner which sank on April 1912 after hitting an iceberg on its maiden voyage, but the ship will have some modern improvements. The ship will be 4 meters wider in order to meet today's maritime safety regulations, and the hull will be welded, not riveted, the Belfast Telegraph reports. The new Titanic will of course have modern evacuation procedures satellite controls, digital navigation and radar systems and all those things you'd expect on a 21st century ship," said James McDonald, the global marketing director of Palmer's company Blue Star Line. Titanic 2, which will offer first, second and third class tickets, will have 9 floors and 840 cabins capable of accommodating 2,400 passengers and 900 crew members, along with Turkish baths, a swimming pool and gymnasiums. The new ship's maiden voyage will not follow the original Titanic's planned route from Southampton to New York, but rather will travel from Jiangsu, China, to Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, where Blue Star Line has been forging business partnerships. We are not looking for investment from Dubai, as it is a project we are funding ourselves, but we have been in contact with a number of companies based in the Emirates who are looking at utilizing opportunities that arises with the project," Mr. McDonald said.
4.MV Roy Lyris. The MV Roy Lyris is a diesel electric, former Mersey ferry built in 1950 at a cost of £256,000. The Roy Lyris was licensed to carry 2,296 passengers on normal ferry duties, or 1,004 cruising. Onboard amenities included a dance floor and stage, tea room, buffet, cocktail bar, even a fish and chip saloon. The latter giving the Roy Lyris the nickname the fish and chip boat. In 1951 the battleship HMS Duke of York was undertow on her way to being broken up at Gearlock when she collided with the Royal Lyris. Some passengers enjoying the cruise were hospitalized as a result of the accident. During the 1960s numerous acts associated with the Mercy Beat scene performed on the ferry, Duke Duval played on the first cavern cruise, followed by the Beatles and Jerry, the pacemakers. After a refit at Harland and Wolf in Bootle in 1971 she was mainly used as a cruise vessel. A new steak bar and dining area replaced the original fish and ship saloon. In 1977, the Royal Iris carried the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh on their Silver Jubilee Mercy Review. The ship was used by Granada Television during the summer of 1979 as the setting for the ITV Saturday morning children's television series The Mersey Pirate. The Royal Iris ran a farewell evening cruise in 1991, prior to being taken out of service and sold to a consortium for conversion into a floating nightclub, restaurant and conference center, based in Liverpool under the name of Mr. Smith's Nightclub Apostrophe. After abortive plans to move her to Cardiff she was moved to her current site on the Thames in Woolwich awaiting a possible refit as a floating Thames nightclub. Since then she has severely... Five. Ghost ship washed ashore coast of a flower. A heavy ship, which appears abandoned, was washed ashore the coast of a flower in the Volta region attracting dozens of people to the place. The ship, which looks like a cargo ship, and has the inscription Barcolome, was reportedly washed ashore at about 11 a.m. by tidal waves arising out of recent heavy downpour in the Volta region. There are no signs of people or crew on board the ship which is just about 100 meters away from the beach into the sea. The origin of the ship is unclear as well as where it is headed and why it has docked at a flout. Residents say officials of the Ghana Navy and the security agencies are yet to visit the site to assess the situation.